friends, MD Vegan. Today I make something super simple. It's almost the basics, the essence of my method take three. I have just three ingredients. To be precise, I have only two ingredients usually. Because I wanted, I just had a desire, desire to combine bananas and apples. Yes, yeah, so simple. I mean, not in a blender, just cutting in small pieces and slices or triangles, thin, pretty similar size, and just eat them together. That's all. And uh, I don't need, even need a dressing for that. You see? Oh, this is, I mean, and especially that due to the both of the, this wonderful fruit. I have bananas here, and I opened one of the bananas in the other days, and I thought, you have four bananas and two apples, yeah, that's it. And I, and I thought, wow, what a beautiful banana. They're very special. Sometimes we have bananas that are very, a uh, little bit um, different, you know, to so sweet or something. You know, they have all their different qualities. But there is one kind of banana that is firm, even when it ripes. It is firm it's, and has the wonderful, um, yeah, it's not too sweet. It is sweet, but it has a very nice light flavor. I can't describe it. I, I love it a lot. That's why but the main the main thing is that I that made me um, want to just eat it together with an apple. Yeah. Apple is also another fruit that is really um, basic. It's one of the uh, most um, desired fruits uh, on the planet. Banana, as I mean, is the most favorite fruit. They said uh, maybe it was now uh, because it had a um, different, um, I don't know why, but both are very high appreciated. Now, let's say that, let's give it at that. Yeah. The apple has a history, different history. It's not that old. Bananas are all older, I guess. But apples, they come from Eastern uh, Europe, uh, somewhere, uh, Kazakhstan or something, Kazakhstan. That's uh, strange that the apple comes from there. It has been a different apple before. It had been cultivated in, in so many varieties in the West, and a long time it was the favorite, considered the favorite, favorite fruit because it is balanced, to say balanced between sweet and sour. Banana is different now, has a totally different history, uh, totally um, exploded now, is so much, uh, much more than, than, than apple. I don't know why exactly, but both are very interesting for many, many people. And so, um, yeah, that, that I mean, um, makes it so simple. They can do that food and it's and it is, I never had it in mind before to combine it just like that. I always put dressings on top of it or some nuts or seeds or so. And I definitely will go from this recipe now to the next step and put something on top of it. But, but now, for now, as I said, it is a take three method. Um, I use it together with a lemon. But the lemon, not only um, as a dressing or not not specifically as dressing because that doesn't even need a dressing to get to eat this. The texture is perfect, sweet and crunchy, both together. Apple is crunchy, banana is sweet, sweet and sour, sweet from the banana, uh, sour from the apple. And there's even a little bitterness in the banana. If you bring it very close to the flavor, it comes out when combining with other fruits or so. Banana has that bitter flavor. It's a very complex flavor. It's, this food is wonderful. So in the health benefits, I can't even start to enumerate that, but the minerals, you know, the vitamins, so wonderful. The texture, the flavor, the, the fiber, the fiber is also beyond important in apples both and in bananas. Both have high in sugar and how much energy glucose directly into the, into the brain cells, you know, the food of our, of our most important organ. So there is a lot to tell about these wonderful things. And the fruitarians will be happy because it's just a fruitarian meal. But what I don't add is a lemon because the lemon is needed to keep these both of these fruit nice and not to make them um, turn brown. If it takes some time to eat it, it is sitting there in the bowl and it begins to turn brown. If I go away and do something else, they turn brown pretty quickly without the lemon. Yeah, That's only from the outside what you can see here. I have this tool. This is, you see, this is um, a lemon press, a citrus press. It's an electric one. And I really highly really recommend to buy that, to make this little expense, this little, because it's so uh, versatile, because I use um, oranges or lemons all the time. Yeah? 
But lemon, for example, can be everywhere, almost, uh, to make things more durable, and not only durable from the outside, but also to make the bioavailability much higher. For example, if you combine lemon with iron, then you boost the iron intake, yeah, just by using the lemon. On the other hand, not using lemon can make it almost impossible to absorb any iron. That depends on what it is um, served with, yeah, you know, and, and calcium and these things. I just pour it now, but first I get out of another container. I said, Jerry, I will put it into another container here, combine it, put it into a bowl, the bananas and the apples, and I will top and I will pour the lemon juice on top. Yeah, this is um this machine, this tool is really important because it makes it so much easier. We especially make your orange juice in the morning, in traveling, for example. I buy some oranges, can buy them everywhere, juice them in a juicer and have a nice oil. Where if I would use the oranges in a hand press, it would take so much more time. And the bigger presses, the bigger hand press, of course, the, the one with the leverage leverage. Of course, that's the best one, but it is more expensive. This one isn't even 20 bucks, yeah. And it is so versatile. It gives, does such a great job and saves so much time. This is one of the tools I would really recommend yeah, to have in every kitchen, uh, together with some other tools that are very inexpensive. And, and you don't need to have a, a blender at first or, or a, a food processor. That can all come later if you're really interested in raw food. Yeah then um, these things, uh, especially high-speed blenders and these kind of things, very, very expensive, but of course very important in the kitchen, but the small things, you yeah, can go such a long way with that, yeah? Orange juice, lemon juice, yeah, cutting board, a knife, and, uh, or a seed mill, yeah? coffee mill, coffee grinder, electric coffee grinder, also another tool, very versatile, yeah? something to grate the, um, the ginger with, yeah? There are so many easy, inexpensive, or a vegetable peeler. Yeah? So many inexpensive things that are beyond necessary. And all the big chefs, yeah, the professionals, they all use them every day. These kind of things are also very nice. Maybe that's for today, yeah? this kind of story from the very simple kitchen tools. And I'm sure I had that in mind. I, I was a little bit um, fantasizing on that. Yeah? Uh, about how nice it would be to make it, and immediately, pretty immediately, came the thought: What can I? What else can I put on top? Yeah. For example, how about buckwheat is with that? Would be amazing. Or just a very light dressing, for example, um, a sesame milk into that. Yeah. Soaking this uh, the buckwheat is with sesame milk. Wow. You know what buckwheat is? What happens to buckwheat is when they um, soak in the water. They have been dried back, yeah, to crisp. And they have been sprouted before, and they are very small after the drying and very crispy. But when you put the, the something liquid on top, a, 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 a juice, some fresh juice, or or um, 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 sesame milk, for example, then they um, get bigger again, and you remain crunchy, and have this softness, this wateriness from from directly from the field so they're even better after this cultivation this process it's complicated but they are so delicious and more nutrient dense than everything so they transform by soaking and drying and everything a lot and um, into the good into the better so putting that into here with um, with the sesame milk could be one of the next things to come and well, a raisin on top or so. There are, there are many options, but this is the basic one. The basic, simple, basic one. And maybe it's one of the most interesting and uh, simplest of breakfasts that food combination can bring. It is for the fruitarians. Yeah? Very interesting too, because the fruitarians, I have a very interesting book where all the kinds of fruitarianism are defined because due to them, how many people I would follow this path and how many would that. Then they made a little uh, equation and said, okay, most of the fruitarians are, uh, uh, would be considered as people who mostly eat fruit. Vegan they always are. Of course, fruitarian means mainly vegan, yeah? not animals, that is fruit. Yeah? That is the basic meaning of fruitarian due to the most of the people. 
And um, then there are fruitarians using mostly fruit in the narrow sense, like, mean, like meaning bananas and apples, for example, with a seed inside, and only a small amount of vegetables, greens and these kind of things, or, or even, um, yeah, you can even uh, count uh, a cauliflower in or so. And um, then the other way around, more greens and vegetables and less fruit. Yeah. There's, there are many different kinds of, 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 of understanding what fruitarianism is yeah, due to the people that are actually practicing it. Yeah. Um, they're all vegans, of course, because of the fruit factor. And it's often misunderstood. Yeah. Um, but the ones who are more on fruit than anything, they will be happy, with, especially with this, and well, I love fruit also. Maybe it's the, the most important um, um, food for me are fruits, I would say. If I really have been, have, have had the choice, I really would have said fruit at first, maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, the physical food, yeah, the physical food, of course, for the body. For the mind, the food is not a story, yeah. Music, yeah, wonderful thoughts, yeah, all these things, um, they go down to the heart directly. But the physical, that is, of course, fruit, I would say. And it is, but it wouldn't be enough to eat fruit all the time. It, you could, of course, but then you would have a problem to get enough calories. Yeah? No, to have to have enough uh, of the minerals and 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 the, and the, and the nat and nutri nutrients that are mostly to be found in, uh, in in vegetables, in greens, and these kind of things. So that's why uh, many fruitarians would have uh, more or less um, vegetables in their accommodation simply as an economic thing because you don't want to eat all day long. If you non-stop eating then you can do it with bananas only for example. Yeah. But uh, to make it really um, a nice and balanced day yeah, you have some times of eating and most of the times it's doing something else then you would definitely have to use more vegetables and other fruits and other, and other fruits, nuts and seeds and so on. But that's a long topic, yeah. I just want to make it very short. And I thought it might be a good occasion here with a very purely fruitarian, fruit fruitarian um, meal, a breakfast, uh, to, to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, that's a lot of fruit, food stories. And I hope you enjoy it. If you have something to contribute, I'm always open to learning new things. So interesting, the world is so big and we have so much to learn all the time. And if you like, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to MD Vegan on YouTube, even better. Push the bell button, get notified every day when, meet, when, a, new, uh, when a new video comes out. And find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and Twitter. Thanks for watching again. Hope to see you soon.